scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God and doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. God is in the business of raising ambassadors of the kingdom. We live in a time in history when we need to understand the dealings of God across the nations. And for us to be relevant in the kingdom, we must look beyond ourselves. Hallelujah. We cannot at this point just be looking for bread to eat, water to drink. The purposes of the kingdom is bigger than that. And so we must stretch our desire for spiritual things to be beyond us and begin to look at the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Tonight, we are going to be examining the Antichrist system, the structure, Babylon. Hallelujah. Please, I want you to pay attention. The goal of the series, The Emergence, is to bring us to a point where we realize that the church is God's strategy. The church is not just an institution. It is a strategy. It is the name given to God's strategy. The apostolic and prophetic strategy that will establish the victory that was shared upon the cross. Hallelujah. And um, I began to tell us that there is a prophecy upon our lives and upon our generation. Understanding that prophecy and knowing how to walk with it becomes the key to being relevant in this season. Hallelujah. So we are going to be examining the system. There is a system. There is a kingdom. Please follow me. There is an operation of darkness. Whether or not you believe it, there is a system that has been at the fabric of human civilization. Hallelujah. And this system has evolved itself through time. Hallelujah. Masquerading itself in secrecy. Evolving through human civilization. But one and the same system. Hallelujah. Because you see, the contention of light and darkness is unto one goal. An advocacy of an allegiance. What you see happening in the world system today is the continuation of the desire of Satan. He began this from the heavens and was judged. And all through time, everything that has happened in human history is a contention of light and darkness to the end that the allegiance of mankind be submitted to an entity called Satan. And if we do not understand the happenings of this system, we will not, you see, the, the circumference of our understanding must transcend beyond healing. If, come, if this gentleman is sick and has cancer, for instance, and I lay my hands upon him and I say, be healed, and he's healed of the cancer, um, as good as that is, it falls short of that which God desires for us to know. Are you getting me? Because the cancer in, 
is in his body because of an ancient story that predates even his existence are you getting what i'm saying we are in the middle of prophecy we are in the middle of history and we must understand why the contention why is the devil determined to oppress your family why is the devil determined to stop you from marriage or stop you from giving birth is it just because he doesn't like you is that all is that all to the story why the aggression and the hostility from hell why does the devil want you poor and broke just because he doesn't want you to have a house no you see that there is an ancient story that predates our existence and we are just in the middle of history and we must come to a point where we are taught and we understand we must connect to history then we will be able to appreciate what Jesus did on the cross and then we will be able to know our roles as individuals and as a church in returning the Christ bless you hallelujah thank you Jesus open our eyes in the name of Jesus Christ Daniel Daniel lived in a time that was very prophetic very strategic the book of Daniel is an adumbration a foreshadowing of the church our mandate our assignment and the book of Daniel theologically speaking gives us the clearest explanation about the system of Babylon now the Antichrist system over time has carried different names Egypt Babylon Jezebel the world system hallelujah regardless of the name you call it it is one and the same system led by the same agenda it has not changed strategies have evolved through civilization but it has been one and the same so Daniel found himself in a land of captivity alongside his friends you know in a place called Babylon and it was during the time of a king called Nebuchadnezzar. Kings in those days were like gods. They were literally gods. Aside from their physical stature like Og, the king of Bashan, he was said to be a Nephilim, a giant. Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar was a very amazing king. And the Bible tells us that at a point he had a dream. And it was a strange dream. Can you help me with the fan? It's really shifting my Bible. Just shift it away from me. Thank you. Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and called all his sorcerers and said, I need the meaning of this dream. And when he was angry that they could not interpret the dream, he said, go and kill them. And Daniel said, no, not so. Don't be hasty. Give me time. Hallelujah. Give me time and the interpretation will come and the bible says then the secret was revealed unto daniel and in the description of what daniel saw he saw an entity made of the head of gold i'm just rushing so that we'll get to the core of the teaching the head was made of gold right the chest was made of silver is that true from the stomach region down to the thigh it was made of bronze and then he began to describe that the feet was a mixture of, of iron. You know, it, the, the legs were iron and then the feet was both iron and clay. Now, it was a revelation of different dispensations that would come. And Daniel began to speak to the king that dispensations would begin to come. It was, it was a revelation of different appearances of the structure of this Babylon. A godless system hallelujah but then let me just recap a bit to help us understand the Bible makes us to understand that a lot happened in the Garden of Eden hallelujah I know that we know about the old story I've shared it again and again here but maybe for the benefit of those who have not been here for a long time let me just recap again how that the story between mankind 
and the devil and darkness is an ancient story. Is that true? And I did tell us how that Satan is not the opposite of God. It's important for us to understand this. Because what we call eternity is the summation of infinite dispensations. Is that true? And that there was a dispensation where Satan did not exist. Is that true? Satan was created out of the predeterminate wisdom of God. There was a dispensation in time where he did not exist. Hallelujah. Job 38 begins to give us um, a lot of, of, of revelations when God was speaking with Job. Now, when Satan came on board, I told you that the office of Satan in heaven was what? The custodian. The name Satan is not the name of an entity. The name Satan, Satan, means accuser. Right? And devil means what? Deceiver. So he said you shall cast out devils. It's not the name of a person. It's a generic name. Praise the Lord. And then the Bible makes us to understand how that um, this being was created and according to the order of his fashion because your office in heaven determines both your instrument of creation right and the kind of service you are going to bring and so lucifer was meticulously created using sound piped stringed instruments and i hope you realize that lucifer's jurisdiction of operation was the garden of eden remember i told you the garden of eden was not created for adam the garden of eden existed long before adam are we there lucifer was in the garden of eden the very garden of eden was his habitation and the garden of eden was not in the earth i hope you know it's still intact there there are different planes of heaven as we are taught in the bible the heaven of heavens is where god dwells but there are many other planes those planes are still existent today is that true are we following now i just want us to get the background so that we will understand this concept you see when you understand this there are certain levels of spiritual authority you will stand upon it will no longer be a guesswork or trying to jack yourself into their reality light has brought you into that truth some things no longer will exist because you have found something that is true are we following now And so, on the strength of Lucifer's office, being the light bearer, he had access to the presence of God. And let me say it again, I'm just doing a recap. I've taught us how that angels grow by what? Excelling in light. Is that true? That's how you measure the age. In the realm of the spirit, we don't age like time. There is no time. So you measure the age of spirit beings by how much they've had access to the throne room. Because every time you meet God, there is an emission, a rub off of his glory upon you. Right? And even in heaven, you do not visit the throne room every time. Because even at that realm, the glory of God is too strong for you to come and stay there. Access is granted unto you. Hmm. Praise the Lord. And so, because of Lucifer's function, Lucifer means the light bearer the custodian of the revelations of the heavens. He had unusual access to the presence of God and it increased his beauty and his light. Even among the cherubims, right? He was the most valued. Because you see, before man was created, the order of heaven is the Trinity. Now the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. But he was not called Father. I hope you know he only became Father when Jesus became Son. Is that true? So he was not called Father, God Almighty. Jesus was called the Word. His name still is the Word. Hallelujah. And then the Spirit of God. So the organization was God. Now, as we know, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have the angelic Kedah, right? And then the head of the angels are the seraphs. The head of the seraphs are the cherubim. And the head of the cherubims was God. So directly after the cherubims, I mean God was the cherubims. Are you seeing that? So that access. But now when God created man, what happened? He took man, 
making him equal right with himself the order changed so now the head of the seraphs is the cherubim the head of the cherubim is the woman the head of the woman is the man and the head of man is god christ now and the head of christ is god this is the structure are you getting the point now when you understand the proximity between the cherubims and women you will know why many women are under the influence of strong spirits hallelujah that's that's for another teaching you, you see you see that they seem to be the most vulnerable there is a reason it's not just because they are ladies hmm. get the teachings they are all available praise the lord and so this rebellion was led watch this the bible begins to tell us in ezekiel um, 28 and isaiah 14 the manifesto of satan he said i will exalt myself above the stars of god right he says i will be like the most high that's what he said what do you think would have given satan audacity to want to replace god to be equal with god means to be a partaker of his nature to be equal to god means you can replace him that's what lucifer wanted are you, are you understanding my story? And so he mobilized a lot of the angels in heaven. Apollyon, Leviathan, Baal, Mammon. All these were spirits. Mobilized them in a rebellion to fight. I'm, I'm just doing a quick recap. There's, there are teachings already on that. And for them to fight, they needed to change their original estate. That's what the Bible says original estate means your default position of creation because in heaven um how many of you have seen uh, maybe doctors when they are going for surgery they put on their lab coat right there is an attire they wear because of their function that's how it is in heaven you don't wear clothes like this uh -uh. the the garments in heaven change according to what you are doing so if you are going to the throne room you wear a garment called praise it's not just a song it's a garment the psalmist saw it, right? <laughs> he said he will give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Is that true? And so for these spirits to carry out their treason, they needed to leave their original state of creation so that they will assume a structure that will be able to afford them that which happened. And this was shown to John in the Isle of Patmos. He said there was war in heaven. And what happened? lucifer that rebellious entity attempting to fight because he had known all the mysteries of god by reason of being the custodian of the mysteries and he said if this is all god is then i've read everything i know every possibility that can be in god are you getting my point point? and when there was that fight the bible says woe to the inhabitants of the earth when he prevailed not remember revelations woe to the inhabitants of the earth for the devil that old serpent has been cast down and he comes with anger and great fury now the meaning of that is this when it was obvious that satan and his cohort a third of the angels the bible tells us would not prevail in their bid to run back to their original estate they were trapped from the heavenlies are you getting me never to be like they were again and never to be like mankind so by default the devil and all his entities are in a perpetual state of torture aside from anything so they cannot be in a state of rest are you getting what i'm saying it is it is in the character of darkness to run to and fro the book of Job. When he asked him, he said, from whence comes that? What did he say? Running to and fro. Jesus gave us a revelation that when a spirit leaves a man, what happens? That means if they can find expression in human vessels on the strength of the fact that man is the highest of God's creation, they can assume some position of rest. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so Lucifer led that rebellion. And when it did not happen, he was cast down to the earth. Watch this. And something happened. Because you see, perfect love casts out fear. And if God is love for casting Lucifer, 
he must justify the fact that he was not insecure and so he created man and gave man everything to prove that it was not because he was afraid like a politician fighting his rival are you getting him are you getting the story now so he created man angels were created from light but man was made from the dust of the earth and the bible says god took his very cupboard that image what satan died fighting for and put in the man my goodness and then he made him in charge of everything when that was happening lucifer was watching hey lucifer was not somewhere moving around lucifer had access to watch he saw the creation of man are you getting what i'm saying and when he saw man he saw god authorize him and give him the seat of dominion and then in eden lucifer's very habitation that was where man was kept are you seeing that it's an old story you just know that something happened your father got up in the morning one leg could not move it's an old story it's not just the issue of healing anointing it's about understanding the agenda of god and let me tell you when you know this you will do more miracles unconsciously because there is a light from you that will emit everywhere you go you become a true advocate of the kingdom hallelujah are you following me now and so lucifer in that situation came and started beguiling man and i told you that what happened in the garden of eden was a foreshadowing of redemption is that true because the bible tells us that authority was given to adam the man is that true but eve was made out of his nature so she was a partaker of the man's nature are you getting the point now and so when that happened they had dominion together satan ultimately wanted to take off the dominion and the only way he would take off the dominion watch this if god created man in his image right and put that man as the highest of his creation then it means if that man bows to satan what is he saying in essence if i am equal with christ and i bow to you i have accepted that satan is greater than him are you getting the whole dynamics of what happened in the garden and so for him to do that he came through woman watch this i want to explain to you a very powerful mystery please follow me adam did not fall by mistake first peter tells us it was the woman who was deceived not the man let me tell you why adam fell adam fell because according to god's system of love you have to love unto death to prove that you love are you getting what i'm saying husbands love your wife as christ loved the church now that the woman had fallen the man had to follow her because of love that's why for jesus to redeem us he needed to come down and be like us the same way adam left his estate to be like his wife are you following me now are you getting the whole thing so adam was not deceived when he fell immediately god looked from the heavens and saw the throne that he put man upon empty and when he saw that throne it was on account of that he said adam where are you he wasn't just saying adam are you naked what happened now don't you know you're an adult that's not what he was saying hallelujah he saw the throne it was a spiritual position of dominion and when he saw it he said adam where are you adam said i had to follow this woman and god did not rebuke him because that was a true picture of love and he said woman what have you done she said the serpent satan was very careful to hear the prophecies that will now come out of the mouth of god and he said this and that will happen and he said the seed will bruise your head now understand that satan has known that god is prophetic in his statements the meaning of that was a confusion to him because until man came reproduction had never happened only creation they never knew that it was possible for a man to meet a woman all of a sudden satan saw me um i said mary um eve getting pregnant and then she gives birth to cain and satan says this is amazing thinking cain was the seed of the woman that was prophesied he entered into cain are you seeing that then he saw that man can still get a woman pregnant again 
and gave birth to Abel and he made Cain kill Abel. Are you following me now? Genesis chapter 5. I want to show you the origin of the system of Babylon. That's why we are saying all of this. In the highest Let our King be lifted Oh, oh Jesus, you be lifted High Higher, be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Higher, be lifted higher. Sorry, four, four verse sixteen. Watch this. Cain, that rebel, Cain did not even know what happened to him. The devil found expression in him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because he needed to continue that agenda. And watch this. This is the origin. From verse 16. is projected. Read. One to read. And Cain did what? Stop. What does it mean to go out of the presence of the Lord? It doesn't mean to run away from him. It means to depart willfully from his governing authority. Cain said, God... As far as me and you are concerned, I, I refuse your headship over my life. And Satan said, this is exactly what I want. Are you getting the point now? Cain departed from the presence of God. And he went and dwelled in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. 17. And Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch. He had a son. And he did what? Built a city. Watch this. Because the pride of any king, kings name cities after their sons and so on and so forth, representing their future. This was the manifestation of the spirit of the Antichrist. He built a city and he called the name of that city Enoch after his son. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now from this city, Christ or God as we know was not the head of this city. It was a city of rebellion. Are you getting what I'm saying? All kinds of human atrocities began to happen. Anger, envy, killing, rivalry. It was, an, it was the government of Satan. The first manifestation of the government of Satan that our dispensation records started from Cain. Are you getting this now? And the Bible says the moment that happened, we see the first manifestation of the spirit of Elijah in the Bible. It came in the person of Noah. Are you getting what I'm saying? The spirit of Elijah is not a person. It's not a prophetic spirit. It's the spirit that restores men to the ordinances of God. Because he said, every time a revival is about to happen in the earth, there is a spiritual pattern. Elijah must show up. Is that true? When, when, when there was darkness all around, Elijah the Tishbite showed up. Right? Micah, Malachi chapter 4 tells us before the day of the Lord, Elijah will come again. Is that true? Before Jesus showed up, who came? Elijah. In John came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Now, this Babylon, the spirit of Babylon is a governmental system. It's a system that is hungry for power and sovereignty and allegiance. Please understand this. That is the reason why Babylon oftentimes would operate with kings. Notice that Jezebel married Ahab the king. The same spirit of Jezebel reemerges in Herodias, making sure the original wife of the king dies. And then Jezebel in Herodias marries the king. Is that true? Herod in your Bible. And then demands for the head of John the Baptist. What do you do with the head of a man? in continuation to the vow Jezebel made to Elijah that I will remove your head. After many years, human beings change, but the agenda is still the same. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hmm. So, Noah was the first manifestation of 
of a true son of God. And, and, and I've told you again and again that the concept of the sons of God did not start in the New Testament, right? We see in the book of Job 38, sons of God. Man was not even made. That was during the creation of heavens. The sons of God were rejoicing. It's an office in heaven. sense the power of God very strongly. Are you following me now? Let's see how far we can go. Noah came. What was the instruction? He said, Noah, the earth has become wicked. I need to judge it. He said, build an ark. Theologically speaking, the ark was the, the size of three stadia. Three large stadiums. Right? Three story buildings made of gopher wood. Noah spent 120 years of earth's time building that. He committed his entire life to build the ark. And when that happened, Noah, his wife, the three sons and their wives entered in. And what happened? There was judgment. Is that true? The whole race was wiped. And out of eight people, the spirit of the Antichrist still thirsty for the continuation of the agenda. What happened? The Bible says Noah drank wine. And he was drunk. And then one of his sons saw his nakedness. I've said it again. That is a coded language. That is more than just seeing a man's nakedness. Don't parents take their, don't children take their parents to the hospital? Don't they bath them? What is it about seeing a man's nakedness that would demand such a cause? It was more than that. It was not just looking at a man's nakedness. There were mysteries that were given Noah. It was that mystery. The spirit of the Antichrist entered one of the sons and made sure he peeped into those mysteries because Satan does not know the future. I hope you realize that it's because he did not know the future that's why they killed many people during moses time if he knew he would look for moses exactly and kill satan is not so accurate you see the goal of this is to demystify this guy that has threatened the nations because speaking he said oh king of tyre he said thou which subdued the nations the strength of evil is deception 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 nations can be deceived and if we are to be ambassadors, we must understand which gives us that which gives us strength in this day and this age. If you're following me, say amen. After the judgment of Noah out of the eight people, Satan found expression in one and wickedness grew. Watch this. Genesis 11 verse 1. We see the continuation of that agenda of the Antichrist system. In the first man, who originated what we have come to know today to be witchcraft and occultism he said and the whole earth was of one language and one speech verse 2 and it came to pass this and that the land of china verse 3 and talking about nimrod now nimrod kush that man nimrod have you read about him nimrod the son of kush now theologically speaking nimrod killed his father Cush and married his mother Semiramai and today she's the one that is worshipped in many sects as the queen of heaven hallelujah the spirit of the antichrist entered into Nimrod a governmental system see it again and he said come go to let us what build a city notice that every time that spirit manifests, it seeks to build a city. A godless governmental system that can authorize the activity of darkness in a way to mock God. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you, everything that has happened from Genesis 11 until Jesus came was different ways and strategies for the devil to make sure that this agenda of darkness so the antichrist system is not just a system of witchcraft it's not just a system of perversion it's a system that seeks to transfer the allegiance of humanity to any other entity outside of god are you are you getting what i'm saying now this is a very powerful teaching if you do not understand this you you will be in for a root shock and you will not have the intelligence to confront the things around your life and to walk in victory 
Watch this. When Jesus came, when Jesus came, what happened? Matthew chapter 4, from verse 4. Satan, when he finished fasting, I hope you realize that all Satan had been doing. Do you know the reason why every nation fought Israel? Because of that prophecy, the seed will bruise the head of the serpent. The moment God entered a covenant with Israel, they became the enemies of everybody. Because he had given them a clue that the seed must come out from that. Are you getting the whole thing? It wasn't just because Israelites were wicked people. No. The moment they became a covenant people. When John the Baptist came into the scene, what happened? The spirit of the Antichrist started moving the scribes to ask, are you the Christ? He wanted to know, are you the Christ? And John kept confusing them. He said, I'm the voice of one. Said, who, who are you? Are you the Christ? Don't confuse us. He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Repent. The moment John said, this is my, he said, behold the lamb. When he mentioned that from that time, watch this. Jesus became the enemy of the scribes, the Pharisees and everybody. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, um, Matthew chapter 4. When he took him, he said, man shall not live by bread. That's, he told him, turn this stone into bread, right? Temptation number two. He took him to a pinnacle in the temple and he said, John. John. Many of us would have jumped and died because we always like proving we are anointed. <laughs> you would have jumped and died. That would have been it. Case closed. No redemption. Verse next. Now watch this. Watch this. Verse 6, please. Let's go to verse 6. Or 7, 7. I'm looking for the third temptation. Uh, okay, 8. Let's look at it. Okay, it says again, watch this. It says the devil takes who? Jesus, your Jesus. Satan told him, follow me. And Jesus went. It's in your Bible. Why? Because he had the keys of dominion. The very key of Adam was in his hands. And God had to respect it. He said, he took him to a high mountain. Where is this mountain in the earth today? That when you stand upon, you will see the glories of the world. It was a spiritual thing here. It was not just a, which of the mountains do you stand? It says Satan took him into, not upon, into. He entered somewhere. It's in your Bible. He took him into a high mountain and showed him the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. He said it is mine. I know that you want this. Satan revealed there to us the strategy of the advancement of the antichrist system watch this this is how satan markets it in that mountain there is wealth in that mountain there is job without struggle in that mountain there is free marriage without toasting look up please are you getting what i'm saying and he said he took him up to that mountain and he showed him the glory so watch this satan never tells you what you are to do he first shows you what you will get so that it becomes difficult to say no. This is what he did to Jesus. He took him there and showed him everything. And then verse 9. And said unto him, all these things I will give thee. Meaning it was within his power to give anybody. Is it true? <laughs> it says, if thou will what? If thou will what? Are you seeing that? That was all. So it's not about money. It's not about cancer. It's not about HIV. It's about allegiance. It's not about witchcraft in your family. It's not about refusing the church from growing. It's not about stopping you from passing jam. It's bigger than that. Satan does not need all those things. It's not about demons oppressing you. There is a bigger story. If you don't understand, you will sit down in spiritual myopia, fighting all kinds of things. Here's the key. If thou will fall down and worship me. The Bible says the same spirit operated in Nebuchadnezzar and he built 90 feet of solid gold. Is that true? And he said the moment you hear music, everybody do what? Bow. Now, the goal is this. Satan does not want you to bow down directly to him because he, is, he was the God of this system. Watch this. 
He said, bow down to anything that is not God. It's still the same thing you are doing. Bow down to money. Bow down to women. Bow down to your uncle. It's still the same thing. Are you understanding the, the structure of the Antichrist system? So, the Antichrist system is not just the system of occultism and witchcraft. It's the system that brings your life under compulsion to an allegiance to any other thing outside of the Christ. And there is a way that happens. Are you getting blessed, please? Jesus was eventually going to take back the kingdom. Take back the keys. But Satan said, why follow the long route? We can negotiate and I can make this thing easy for you. Why go through all of this, this thing? Just bow down and have it. Right? Why spend years and 10 years and, and almost die building a bungalow? Bow down to me and own estates. That's why the Bible says, what shall it profit a man? Have you read it in your Bible? If he does what? That means you can do business with your soul. The question is, who is buying it? You are the one selling it. Who is buying it? What shall it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? That means you sell your soul. The question is to who? Who is this person that can buy and do business with souls? Revelations 18. Let me show you. We hail you most high I hail you most high Revelations 18 let me read very quickly watch this it's going to be a long reading verse 1 Revelations 18 verse 1 are you there and after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was made bright with his glory and he cried with a mighty voice saying what babylon is babylon the great is falling it says and it's become the habitation of demons and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean beast watch this mystery verse 3 let's see if media can help us if you are fast enough to help us, then fine. Otherwise, I'll just go back to my Bible. For all nations have done what? Have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication. That's why you see women representing that system. Jezebel, Babylon. When they meet prospective kings, when they meet talented people like a harlot comes to a man, they come seeking a fraternity. Bow down to me fraternize with me and i will open the gates of the kingdom i will open the gates of wealth i will open the gates of grace are you getting what i'm saying it says and the kings of the earth have done what committed fornication with her and the merchandise of the earth are works rich through the abundance of her delicacies she made them rich she made the man a governor she made the man a president Voting or no voting? Huh? She made them celebrity stars on TV. Took them from rags to riches. Babylon the Great. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you understand this, you find out that nothing happens in the system until your allegiance to a deity is confirmed. That story of right nobody rises up from nowhere is a lie are you hearing what i'm saying there is a spiritual dimension to everything in life when you see somebody just get up travels out of the country and comes back and becomes a millionaire the bible says ah, okay when well, verse four the bible says in verse three that the kings committed fornication with her let's run to verse nine and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived luxuriously shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning so there is a prophecy the antichrist system will crumble are you hearing what i'm saying already there is a prophecy ahead 
that anyone that fraternizes with this system will join them. Babylon is falling. That was a prophecy. The system of the Antichrist will be crumbled and there is an entity that will make that happen. The name of that entity is called the church. This is why I'm teaching you what we're teaching. The church is not an institution. The church is the name of the spiritual entity that will crumble this system. Verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in what? One hour is your judgment come. One hour. All you will see is the smoke. The smoke of that city. Now watch this. I told you that through civilization, this strategy of the devil has been masquerading itself in ancient times the kings had fraternity with all of these demons of darkness and all of that watch this when jesus came jesus came to bring us back into the allegiance to god are you getting what i'm saying but then from that time till now there is a contention and the contention is twofold number one an opportunity given to every man to individually declare his allegiance and then number two to bring territories under the corporate allegiance of god are you seeing that now so the first dimension is personal that's what you call new birth that's what you call salvation a declaration that i choose i have an option to choose between babylon and this i will show you how that many christians suffer casualty because they claim they are born again but they are still operating in the system of Babylon. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so Satan makes sure that the boss in the office, right, fraternizes with Babylon. He, he will not go to the devil directly. He will go to a harbor list. And they will say, just make sure this and that happens. And you are the boss. And now you come to work, a Christian. You now come to work and you are under intense pressure. Because the presence of that man wants to push you to compromise on your integrity and your allegiance. Are you seeing how Babylon works? So you graduate with first class and you hold your degree and you are happy. The moment you enter the labor market, they stop you. They say, not so. Who sent you? Whose allegiance are you? You say, anyone, I need a job. That's the point. That's the point. The devil leverages on your desperation to succeed. Are you getting me? And shut the mouth of preachers from teaching that the kingdom of God too has a structure for your success. So in your desperation, Satan comes. He came after Jesus finished praying for 40 days. When a man finished praying, don't you need food? Praying and fasting. So he waits until that desperation is there. 29, 30, 31, 32. Your mother tells you, don't return to my house again if you will not bring a husband. And the devil now comes. Babylon, there is an easier way. Bow down to me and a rich man will show up now. And you will think he's play. The moment you bow down, here comes a rich man. Right? And then you come and you begin that fraternity. Satan uses your allegiance to him to mock God. You see that? Let me tell you something. The greatest insult you can give the devil is to stick to God regardless of what happens. I love you whether things go right or wrong and I'm ready to use your system no matter how slow it is. You see why it is important that preachers teach their congregation the kingdom way of doing everything. The kingdom way of doing everything. So you don't teach people, come to church, pray in tongues, but go to your, your workplace and they just say, ah, they are sharing something. There's one five five hundred thousand that does not have a reason why they are sharing it. And they say, this is my pocket, just put my own fast. This is Babylon. Whether you, if, if nobody told you, I am telling you that is Babylon. So it uses different things. Mammon, it uses lust, it uses different skills. 
but it's still the same thing. Watch this. In our time, in our time right now, the name given to that devilish system, there is a name. The name is subtly, there's no time I would have, I planned playing a documentary, but we'll, we'll sleep here all night. If God grants us grace, maybe next week. There is the name given to the evolution of Babylon. It's called the New World Order, right? In the time of the kings, right from the last one or two centuries ago, it was called the Illuminati. That fraternity of darkness, right? I know many of you have heard about it and just laughed. Look up, let me shock you. Let me tell you a few things that will surprise you. They have controlled the media. Walt Disney belongs to them. CNN belongs to them. They control the information you hear. They control the movie you watch. It's a system. Are you getting what I'm saying now? They control the stock exchange market, Wall Street. They control everything, the governmental systems. They define our scope of civilization. And yet believers are there praying in tongues in church. And we do not understand that we are the ecclesia. The name given to the system that would take the authority of Jesus and prove that darkness cannot prevail where there is light. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? Very important. Don't say it does not concern you. Don't say it does not concern you. When you are in class and somebody looks at you and is frustrated by your passion from God and all of a sudden you see three carryovers you know you did well. FFF, welcome, Babylon is at work. Are you getting what I'm telling you? When a lecturer looks at you and says, if you want to graduate, you know what to do. Go and wait for me at the back of my office. What is that? The Antichrist system masquerading itself now it's not even masquerading itself it's coming out openly a man looks at you and say look at your employment letter i tear it in your presence you go back and say lord i love you anyhow god doesn't want that kind of prayer it's good to love him anyhow but the church must rise he says we are the city set on a hill we will keep begging when we remain poor and broke we keep consoling ourselves that don't worry the day Jesus will come he will wipe our tears he can wipe your tears now are you getting what I'm, sh I'm sharing with you the system right now little children watch cartoons and see right all kinds of of, of, of things that should not be shown children are so addicted not just because they want to watch there is a com they have mastered the mind don't forget they are receiving assistance from the realm of the spirit so little children love seeing blood they love violence you see a little doll baby right if they want me to buy this cup now they will give this cup hips right this cup will have hips it will say use me and you see the man rush i want this one ten bring ten of this cup why because it is a system it has been fabricated it was so subtle we didn't know when it has evolved are you getting what i'm saying right now seduction the seduction that's why it gives it the language of a fornicator the same way a fornicator lures you into an unholy union that's what babylon is doing right now they determine everything everything they create the trends they do everything that happens they control our speakings our language right they tell you what to say they tell you what slang to say they tell you what film to watch they define what is civilization for you if you do not assume a particular mode you are not civilized and it mounts pressure on you and forces you to bend one time, I, I, I think, um, I don't know where they took me to and it was time to eat and they brought all kinds of things. I told them, I said, the work that I do, if I use these utensils to eat, I won't be satisfied. Get me a spoon. I don't have time for, for...
for nonsense. You bring all kinds of things. I, the Bible says, he who does not walk should not eat. That means he who walks. You watch people in the restaurant sweating, pouring rice on themselves because they must use fork. Right? Cutting themselves up with knife. I must do it. I'm not saying you shouldn't be civilized. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm, I'm saying, you see, a system has brought you under pressure. Right? I saw one guy bab his hair and bab dollars. And I said, this guy is broke. He's poor. Now, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a religious person, trust me. But I'm saying, it is the pressure. He probably watched the actor of a film or a musician with dollars or something on his head. And he said, I must become like that. The pressure of Babylon. Are you getting what I'm saying? There were times when our secondary school had decent teachers. You dress, you talk in, you look nice. Now you go and see the people teaching. The guy enters as if he came to pick papers. How are you students? You see that? And, 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 the, and the students watch that. This is the model. This is the mentor that they have to become. If we do not become apostolic and prophetic in our approach, there will be casualty in the decades that are coming. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is this kind of agenda that should govern things like politics. People ask me questions, I say, I, I don't like PDP, I don't like APC, I don't like anyone. All I know is whatever promotes God's agenda, I'm there. It's as simple as that. And we'll force the agenda of God to happen in this nation. For sure. For sure. The church is alive. Don't you think the church is dead? Ask Ebola. The church is very alive. Very, very alive. We sent it back to hell where it came from. Hallelujah. There may be imperfections, but the church is marching. Let me tell you. Jesus is found where the church is. No matter what happens, the church in Nigeria is alive. We are the firstborn of God. We will present to the nations true apostolic and prophetic Christianity before Christ returns. Yeah, that rejected stone. That, why do you think Boko Haram and the rest? It's not just about politics. They are being led by an influence they do not know. But the church will stamp them out. Next week, I will be showing you what we can do. Because they've made the church look powerless. That if you don't have, it's not just about finance. There is an anointing. Jesus Christ took his power and gave that system. Are you getting what I'm saying? He didn't just call one person and say, you, I give you. If you like this guy, I give him. No, he took his power. The power that will crumble Babylon. And said, my ecclesia, take it. I've given it to you. But we do not know. The scope of our use of that power is healing of cancers and this. Right? We do not know that we have the authority to take charge of territories and compel it to come to the alignment of the Christ. Let me tell you something. This will come when things will happen in this nation. You will be surprised. You will wait and see tongue-talking Christian bankers. We will sack anybody who does not love God without apology. Look, look, look. Watch this. The members will be in our churches. So we are the ones who will teach them. And this big mouth, it won't keep quiet. My goodness. My goodness. That time is coming. It's coming. That's what you are becoming. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear. They don't know it. God has shrouded us in a mystery. When it's done with us, we will prove to creation. That Jesus did not tell a lie. A witness is one who claims that the claim of another is true. If, I, if you steal our money and I saw you, right? And we're in court. They will say, stand, hold your Bible. Swear that nothing but the truth. The moment you finish, they say, did you see it? I say, I saw it. They say, prove it. I say, this is the picture. So the church is here to demonstrate that although we were not there at the cross, there is a spirit that was there and he's in us. And in partnership with that spirit, we will prove that he is the king of kings and the lord of lords. No longer allowing Babylon to kill our children. Huh? I wanted to cane one small boy one day. I just saw him. He just looked at one small girl who was running to go and kiss. I wanted to call him, use two fingers and just whip him and say, who taught you? <laughs> you 
probably watch somebody do it. House help, relatives in the parlor, all kinds of, 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 of TV. Right? Look, church, I want you to wake up. That's why we call this series the Imagines. There is an Imagines. The Bible says, Obadiah 1 verse 21, it says saviors. That's what he called them. Saviors shall arise. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Romans 8 verse 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared. There are people, there are people sitting right here that death will not carry them. It's not the issue of I shall not die. You can't die. The assignment compels God's integrity upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? No, no, no. Please believe what I'm telling you. There is a reason why you should not die. If you think it's just to keep being a liability to creation, you are in trouble. There is a way you become so relevant to the agenda of the king. And God gave us a sign. He said, when you begin to see darkness upon the earth, start rejoicing. It's time to arise. Are you not seeing what is happening in the earth? The meltdown. They've not seen anything. A heavy melt. Because the selfishness of man will never allow him carry out Satan's agenda. Somebody will betray somebody. They don't have love. They cannot love. Because love is shed abroad by the Holy Ghost. Love is not affection. Love is shed abroad. That character that can make you almost die to protect another. They don't have it. That's what happened to Boko Haram. They started killing everybody all and sundry when those who sponsored them started denying they say oh you are denying us let's everybody you are enemy hallelujah listen to me brothers and sisters nations will crumble it has only started you the pride of kings will be humbled their equation is being interrupted by a hand they cannot see like belshazzar the handwriting on the wall when it writes upon your government is over. You have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting. Many kings have, they've, they've, they've spoken like the beast. Their blasphemy has risen to heaven. Like the man who made the Titanic and vowed that even God cannot sing the Titanic and stood in awe when the Titanic sank. Only a fool will say in his heart, there is no God. There are people who have vowed and say, if you're, before your family will rise, me, I am the custodian of the oracles of this village. Watch God bring them down. We are here to stamp out nonsense. Listen, Jesus said, all hail. He said, all authority. The word is exousia. The capacity to stand in my office. All authority to unlock the heavens and the earth has been given to me. I give it to you. Please believe it. I give it to you. This is the mindset I carry when I pray for the sick. I know that they are, I take their sickness personal. Because this is about the kingdom of our father and what the devil is doing. It's not about what their village is doing. Kill yourselves there in your village. No. Hallelujah. So Satan has structured it well. He has marketed the gospel of prosperity subtly to the church. So that we remain poor and broke because the borrower is always slave to the lender. Right? He has marketed all kinds of things. So the attack is coming everywhere. Spiritually. Notice brothers and sisters. That our, our forefathers and grandfathers gave birth to 13 children. No CS. Huh? What they used to cut the placenta of the baby we don't even know. Whether it's hot, cold, whether, whatever. They just cut that book 13 times and nothing happened. But here a woman comes because of her allegiance to God. Something happens. They now start saying there's a fibro. That devil is a liar. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Yeah. 
Break every chain. Break every chain. Sing it one more time. There's an army rising up. They're rising up. Rising up to break every chain. To break every chain. So the goal of the Antichrist system is total allegiance to Satan as the source and the sustainer of all things. Full stop. That's the one goal of the Antichrist system. To compel humanity to total allegiance to Satan as the source and the sustainer. By depending on your boss for your daily bread, you are partnering with that. There is an economic system of the kingdom that is bigger than your boss. But if you do not know and you have been taught that it's salary that will fund your assignment, you become a slave to that boss. Then he sleeps with you when he wants to sleep with you. Then he sacks you when he wants to sack you. But there is an army of apostolic billionaires, not just careless money mongers. The secrets of the kingdom shown. We are paying the price now and the world is laughing. Like the ark of Noah, the spirit of Elijah is bringing us to that reality. You've not seen prosperity yet, brothers and sisters. Wait until the army rises. Men whose wealth will be as equal as that of continents. They will walk like gods upon the earth. Why should you beg for, give me $35 to air a program? How much is it when a prostitute sleeps with a billionaire and becomes a millionaire the next day? All these things are the speakings of the beast unto God. They rise as a, a filthy incense to the heavens. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that's what is happening. Look at the graduates in Nigeria. One, one out of every ten graduates get a decent job in the first two years of graduation. That's the plan. Babylon at work. Babylon at work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yet, when you teach the church economic empowerment, they mock you. They say you are being carnal. Right? We do not know that the civilization of today moves upon the strength of economic empowerment. The person who has the resources dictate the rules. We are sick and tired of them doing every kind of thing we will make our own programs we don't have dull people are you hearing what i'm saying there are many of you in your sleep you see these things in dreams you know that there is something about your life it's beyond abu it's beyond zaria some of you god took you wherever and brought you here god gave you admission with one taxi it's not about jam it's about an agenda hallelujah I see this thing every day as the nations crumble I see it as a signal God is saying son stand up stand up church rise up I call my bride the firstborn of God to arise but the reason is because we have refused to pay attention to the things that empower us hallelujah the the chairman board of trustee of this ministry was he was decorated a general last year i said that's right anybody that disturbs us will tell him it's part of kingdom advancement gathered men of influence and shut the gates of darkness are you hearing what i'm saying the kingdom will promote the ideology of god through one word it's called influence 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 that's why we'll keep contending for greater anointing and greater grace. The devil has spoke blasphemy too much. Are you getting what I'm saying? The church has been mocked. They act Nigerian films and they act man of God -da 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 -da, on a demon and then the, he, he releases power in the name of Jesus and the demon holds the anointing and throws it on the ground. Come on now. Which one is that one? There are all kinds of anointings. Which one? 
Which one did he hold and throw on the ground? There is the one you get as talisman. There is authentic apostolic power that Jesus, which one did the Havilah take and throw on the ground? See, we don't understand. These things bring money, but it is the, the generation of man bowing to Satan and receiving money. Let me tell you, if you are poor, let me just announce to you that your poverty is partnering with Babylon. Listen to me. It's a serious issue. It's not the issue of car. No! You don't, you don't need to be a Christian to have car. Men who will shut the gates of darkness, sack lecturers that trouble our ladies, employ the ones that call upon the name of the Lord. Next week, I will show you the strategy. I'm not just making noise. I was trained in the wilderness of the spirit. I'm not, a, I'm not a stupid person just making noise. There is a strategy. Lord, you were higher than any other. We will declare to the nations, our God. Sing one more time. Say, Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Hallelujah. We just returned from a conference in Kaduna. And while I was ministering yesterday, they just brought one mama. You can see the way the devil had oppressed this woman. They were dragging her to bring her out. The son was almost crying. And I said, hold on, we've not started ministering. They were desperate. Why? Most probably because they've gone to a lot of churches with men of God making noise. Jesus can do this. He is this. I know he can do this. Put your faith to work. The manifestation of the glory of God is a visible revelation of the power of God here and now here and now the woman stood there i was talking and i was just watching i said mama what is wrong and they said for five months they've taken this woman to the hospital they said arthritis she cannot walk i, I said that devil is a liar all of a sudden the lord opened my eyes and i saw this innocent woman tied eyes from my head to her toe i saw snakes for this purpose was the son of god made manifest for this purpose for this purpose for that joblessness the every time you see a challenge say for this purpose for this purpose they said you will not graduate for this purpose they said no job will come for this purpose for this purpose for this purpose, for this purpose. everybody in your family is an idol worshiper but for this purpose you came god has taken you as an envoy to crumble babylon to crumble babylon It will happen forget about the pain of today hear me forget about the disappointment i see men and women who will get married age two your child is praying in tongues age two a little boy while you pray in tongues he's praying no 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 listen we won't be fighting and beating our wives it's over we, by now we know it's a spirit and we have authority against it men are not that bad women are not that evil babylon masquerading itself gone are those days i tell you all things are past god is doing something new in our time god is working something powerful in this day God is building a mighty army in our days and he won't stop he won't stop till we look just like him he won't stop hey, he won't stop till the church looks like him he won't stop he won't stop till we look just like him God is raising mighty men in these days. God
God is building a mighty army His days He won't stop He won't stop Till the church looks like Him He won't stop Hey, He won't stop Till the church looks like Him Listen Next week I will show you the strategy On how this will happen Don't you ever think you are little To make this thing happen once God can find a man and find a people, he will do mighty things. He told Jeremiah, don't say I am young. Don't say I am a child. I will put my, my words in your mouth. You will subdue, you will tear down and you will rebuild. Hallelujah. Tonight I came to challenge you. Babylon is falling. What you are seeing in the TV is falling. The old wine has finished. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The church is rising. Watch this. Nigeria, I told you, I've shared with you already the prophetic agenda of God. But Nigeria as a continent, this platform is not the platform I will share some things with you that God has revealed to me. There are some things that if they don't happen this year, the hand of Satan has been broken in Nigeria forever till Christ comes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a reason why you see darkness looming it is beyond humans it's an agenda it's the attacking of the firstborn of god but god is always one step ahead when you see the church pray and we speak don't let the devil fool you that nothing is happening there is much that is being done in the kingdom are you hearing what i'm saying when the dust settles you will see a victorious church he said i will build i will supervise that this church stands i will build my church but the goal is to have as many people come into this alignment look at me one man cannot do this alone one church one ministry cannot do this it takes a people who will say lord we understand Lord, we have pledged our allegiance first and foremost. There are many of us here. Your stand with God is not straight. We don't even know where you stand. As occasion serves. When in Rome, behave like any other place that is not Zion is of the devil. It's as simple as that. For you to be part of this army, your allegiance must not be confused. Where do you stand? Where do you stand? The gates will ask you, my brother is not all about business they will trap you in that oil company where do you stand you must answer the question where do you stand where do you stand when you declare where you stand and then you have committed whatever government you pledge allegiance to as for me i've made a decision thank god i'm going to be a father from the womb you know how john the baptist was filled with the holy spirit <laughs> many men are not responsible if your father here god is speaking to you take charge there are many homes you pray when there's trouble if they don't pay the man three months i say okay children let's come together and pray say let's pray because what god the attack coming to this family and you don't take your place right watch this forget about the flamboyancy you see on tv babylon is falling it's a prophecy babylon is falling and your assignment right now at this level is to be an envoy of the kingdom go to your territory do you know how satan is ravaging our homes there are people in our homes with terminal diseases you are watching them take that authority and that anointing if nobody has told you you are anointed i'm telling you this night you are anointed do you know how things went bad in my family i heard about i heard about the things that surrounded my bed and i said satan you will pay for it ah you will pay for it Are you still afraid of the devil or should he begin to be afraid of you 
I told you it's an old story. Satan is not the opposite of God. There was a day he was not existing. Satan has an exact creation date. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The strength of evil is deception. When you know where you stand and you understand what it takes to enforce that victory, he will stay clear of your life. Some of you get up in the morning, all kinds of pain. You just say, Kai, it's pain. Ah, is this not how my mother felt the other day? Is that what you should... Look, I told you, take this word. Whatever goes wrong in your life, say for this purpose. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may what? Destroy. 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 The church is the representation of the victory of Christ. The church is the representation of the fulfillment of prophecy. The church is the hallmark, the symbol of the wisdom of God. And we cannot fail. There is a generation that must not fail. We are going to pray. Look, you must, you must tell God, I am available. I am available. Some of you, God is calling you from your slumber, your spiritual slumber. Ladies, God is calling you. Forget about that Alaji and concentrate on God. Alaji gives you one million, you insulted God. God wants to make you a nation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Quit all of these carnal things and stay with God and watch him bless you. Don't ever let any man fool you, you know. Gone are the days where when you say you are going into ministry, people just look at you and say, Hey! You mean it? As if this kind, or you say, I'm going to marry a man of God. They say, Talk. His grace is of it. Why are you going to talk like that? You marry a busy businessman and you are happy. I'm X, Y, Z. You know, they have, it's part of this antichrist system. Because the, the, the revelation they are trying to say is, You are marrying a poor, broke man, right? Your job is just to be suffering. They, they imagine four legs of, of firewood trying to cook food for church members. Must you think like that? Who taught you that? The kingdom of God is a prosperous kingdom. Let no man fool you. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's our year of the rain. The kingdom of God is a prosperous kingdom. He wants to give you the anointing and the influence it will take to legislate. But he first wants you to understand this system. Anytime you bow to anything or any principle that is not of God, realize that you are communicating your fraternity with Babylon. That becomes the basis. Your love for God and your passion to see his kingdom come becomes the constraint upon your life to run away from evil. Not the fear of Satan. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm not going to come and try to sleep with a lady now. Why? Not just because I'm afraid of Satan, but because I realize the significance of standing in my position to declare my love for God and my passion, my contribution to see his kingdom come. And that love constrains me. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why I preach. I came back, I came back to this town 12, 12 midnight on the dot. It was as if I was not seeing where my bed was. But I say, no problem, I must prepare. There are lives that we must sharpen because there is an agenda of God. And then one, one demon somewhere will go to call your name. I pity the devil that calls my name in any covert. Number one is that the fire that will come out from whatever they are invoking, that's not all. Two, the harpalist will die as a lesson that not everybody is touchable. My goodness, no matter how a madman is, he will not enter fire by mistake. There are, there, are, there, are, there are mad men and there are mad men. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Invoke nonsense. There are many times I'm about to travel. Somebody send a text. He says, it's so accident. I say, me. Hey. It's not, I'm not just bragging. I'm standing on a rock. Let this mind be in you. You have watched films where a boss will say, I will come and kill you and he will kill everybody helplessly. You have carried that mindset to work with God. 
the believer is supernatural in every way i want you to understand this brothers and sisters i've prayed for people with contagious diseases if i'm lying by now you would have known are you getting what i'm saying it's easy to stand and speak but what happens when you hug and talk to somebody with tuberculosis or somebody with a, a communicable disease i've been doing this for years my body is as healthy as a baby's body healthy as a baby's body there is the reality of another life that when he's at work in you it will turn you into a superhuman hallelujah rise up we are going to pray i want us to insist on some things in the spirit please take this prayer session seriously for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of god hallelujah prayer point number one i'd like you to lift your voice and cry and say lord i declare i pledge my eternity allegiance to you from today there's no going back there's no bending lift your voice and pray you are the lord of my life there's no confusion about it what shall separate us from the love of god in the secret and in the open i love you i belong to your government there's no confusion about it. I belong to your government. There's no confusion about it. Pray. I compel my life to come under the influence of your government. I compel my life to come under the influence of your government. My thought comes under the influence of your government my words under the influence of your government pray e pretes que te le que te va cata está la barata soto pregue de la rara voz aleluya aleluya hear me look up let me speak to you whether you are coming from plateau state or kogi state or wherever you are going to be you declare i've been called out of every tribe hear me every tongue listen don't let yourself to be a victim of where you have come you did choose it don't let anybody speak nonsense and say you came from Kogi State. you came from this as though there is a curse upon your life and there is no way out prophesy with violence in your spirit i've been called out of every tribe every tongue i challenge every power that is not of god Oh, I'm anointed. I carry the fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost as an envoy of power, as an envoy of the kingdom, as an ambassador, as a representative. Called out of every cause called out of every covenant called out of every ordinance pray he make his angels winds and his ministers flames of fire i have no business with the ordinances of the fathers with the ordinances of witchcraft i willingly i choose this day that i serve the king i choose this day that my allegiance is to christ of him
Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. You are creating a reaction in the realm of the spirit. Silent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Look at me. There are many of you, humanly speaking, you are seeing patterns in your family and around your life you know should not be. It's true that you have been saying you are in Christ, but the truth is that as it is right now, there are things you are seeing in your life that are speaking blasphemy to the Lord. You are going to pray. You know what it is. You are challenging Babylon first in your life and in your family. Call it by his name and cause it by the God of heaven. Lift your voice and pray. Break those patterns. Come on. Now. Break those patterns. That pattern of childlessness. I break it. I cause it by the God of heaven. That pattern of failure. That pattern of lust. That pattern of addiction. That pattern of masturbation. That pattern of immorality. I curse you by the God of heaven. I curse you by the name that is above every Pray your way out. Pray your way out. Pray your way out. Way out. I break the patterns. I of Jesus. I challenge the forces of darkness. Pray. I travel by the Spirit in the name of Jesus. The sun shines for my family. The sun shines for me. I cannot go down. No way. There is a spirit of God upon me. Call it by name. Call it by name. Call it by name. If thou shalt say to this mountain, if thou shalt say to this mountain, if thou shalt say, if thou shalt say, if thou shalt say, my protoscope. Command victory, establish victory, not in pain, establish victory in the name of Jesus. Break down the walls of witchcraft. Break down the walls of evil. Break down the walls of limitation. You are an ambassador. You carry a big. God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with me. Stamp power and mind. Sing it from your heart. It's a song of victory. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above I tell you, you will come out a champion. No power will keep you. What an awesome yourselves into two you're going to release prophecies upon that person listen 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 the bible says 
where the word of a king is there is power where the word of a king is there is power hallelujah i like you to pray as if you are praying for your own brother as if you are praying for your sister prophesy open the fountains of blessings open the fountains of grace come on now koinonia pray I call you blessed. I strengthen your is your season of the rain. The glory of the Lord is upon you. The favor of the Lord is upon you. Prophesy from the depth of your heart. Call it forth. Even God who quickened the dead and calls for the things that be not as though they were. Prophesy. I call for that in life. I of light passion. I call it forth. I call it forth upon the dimension of wealth and abundance, supernatural jobs, open doors, new levels of revelation, new levels of hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we pray, we shift things in the heavens. When we pray, we, we grant the angels access to enforce the counsel of the, of the Lord. Listen. We are going to pray. The election is by the corner. We are going to pray. The Bible says pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Zaria is our Jerusalem. We are going to speak to the borders of this city. We stay the hands of evil, the hands of bloodshed. You will not cross the circumference of this city. We hold the keys of this city and we drive out every devil. Come on, pray. Is your Jerusalem? There will be peace upon our walls, peace upon our borders. Shalom, Zaria. Shalom Zaria We pray Upon the borders of this city The north to the south We command Peace Shalom Shalom Nothing missing Nothing broken We drive out every power We drive out every force We take charge Of the heavenlies we take charge. No death. No bomb blast. No bloodshed. In the name of Jesus. The church is praying. The church is praying. The government of God. The institution that carries his authority is praying. We speak hallelujah now we are going to pray i feel sorry for those who say nigeria will divide they don't know the mystery of our creation go and read isaiah 18 when you see the representation of nigeria in isaiah 18 you know that no human entity has what it takes to break this nation are you ready to pray you're going to pray to every border first secure your family I'm not hearing bad news. It's, it's not. No, 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 no. Refuse it and pray. Spread the peace of the spirit across the length and breadth of this nation. Go ahead and pray. We legislate as ambassadors of the kingdom. We command it in the name of Jesus. In Abuja, in Kaduna, in Jos, in Makodi, in Kogi State. Potakot, we command let there be peace let there be peace let there be peace in our nation even in the forthcoming election let there be peace let there be peace by 
by the mercy of God by the mercy of God remember your firstborn oh God remember she that you died for remember your firstborn oh God for God and for God we pray and we invoke the mercy of God upon our families frustrate the token of liars turn their wisdom backward in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. 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 I want you to know that you're establishing things in the spirit. This is how kings reign. The Bible says, let it be done in the earth. In other words, compel compliance. Hallelujah. Compel compliance. Now we are going to pray. This is the season of the rain. Hallelujah. And you are going to speak over your life. Remember I told us that God is, God is changing the dimensions and the levels of people. You must say amen to it in your life. And you are going to pray. There are all kinds of encumbrances that have mocked the integrity of God upon our lives. It's time to challenge it right now. You are going to speak. Whatever area, mention it. And speak. If it's marriage, say it. It must happen. If it's your finances, pray. The wisdom, the strategy, the grace. Lift your voice and pray. From glory to glory. Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, hey, you're welcome in this place. Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Shalom. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh and this is the confidence we have in him that when we pray he heareth us it is within his power to grant us a request hallelujah listen and it only comes alive Every time I hear your voice, it comes alive. Every time I hear your voice, there's a joy in my heart. In spite of all the sadness that surrounds me, and this joy that's in my heart. Only comes alive every time I hear your voice. It comes, it comes alive every time I hear your voice. Apostle, what should I do when I hear bad news? Lock yourself. Put on a song of worship. Don't mind the tears as they roll. Don't mind what you hear. Begin to celebrate. What happens if the brother said he will not marry me again? I know you are human, but you are also spiritual. Whatever dimension you permit is what find expression. What if I thought I would get the job and the job is not coming? Dance and celebrate. 
the one who woke me up can give me job the one who gave me strength to write the aptitude test although I failed he's still alive listen I'm not telling you what I don't do I have already danced all the miracles of this miracle service I've already rejoiced it I didn't just pray it I spent the night forcing your healing to arrive here guarantee it arrived because both the parcel and the deliverer are not mysteries we know them <laughs> ah! may you lose the ability to wrinkle yourself to old age just because of this this thing around no no choose to be joyful choose to be joyful Lord, things are not like that yet. Tomorrow, by 9 o'clock, my landlord is coming. My landlord has already told me, you can go to church, but 9 o'clock is me that will wake you in the morning. Lord, what should I do? Even if you cry, he's still coming. So why don't you rejoice? Are we together? So I thought that my son, you know, would, 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 my son would, would get a very nice job. I thought he was working only to find out that he's been five years without a job. We are dying in this family. Apostle, I did not even eat. I came here hungry. Brothers and sisters, it's joy that will put food in that plate. Your anger is pushing that plate far from you. So bring it closer by rejoicing. I have a very big God who is always by my side, a mighty God by my side. just wasting our time. This is the foolishness that brought us thus far. Hallelujah. I don't like dancing. I don't know how to dance. The Bible said to whom much is given, much is given. Even if all I do is this way, God knows is a is my widow's might and with all my heart. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Some of you, some of you, you know what you did after you took one bottle of beer when you were in the world. So we just have two minutes, Sam. In two minutes, I want us to share this place. Two minutes. Two minutes quickly. Oh, 
Let me have your attention. I just want to explain something. To you. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Yes, yes. Take it easy. When it's time to shout, we shout. When it's time to listen, let's listen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. If we, if when it's time to shout, we shout together. But when it's time to listen, let's listen so that we can allow God step in. Before you sit down, I just want to tell you something. Listen. You see, most times, most times, the difference between carnality and spirituality is not necessarily the action, it's the revelation. The same way someone can just shout and waste his time and just a show of youthfulness, another person can shout with revelation and that alone can be tequila. The shout that will bring down Jericho. Are we together? Now, I know that we just took two or three minutes singing and dancing and jumping before the Lord. I want you to know that God is not a man. Please have this revelation. Are we together? Some of you, you will sit down now and check and find out that certain situations have gone. Some of you in that in that in that rejoicing you will be amazed to know the release of angels and the ministry spirits going to correct situations in your life you must believe this hallelujah please be seated for a minute let me just tie it up and we'll pray my spirit is fired up this praise did something to me joy joy Brothers and sisters, learn this. Be ever joyful. Don't jump today and dance and rejoice. And five minutes later, after service, you are frowning and acting as though it's not God that you came to meet again. Make it a disposition. Not just an emotional thing that happened in the night. The third key, very quickly, that provokes restoration in the life of a man is sacrifice. Key number three, sacrifice. Let me tie it quickly so that we can pray. Sacrifice, First Kings 17 from verse 7. Or really, verse, verse, verse 1, to, 1 to 6. First Kings 17, we we'll read. Or if we do not have time, 17. And it came to pass after a while, he said that the brook dried up because there had not been rain. Read on. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, go down to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow to sustain you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water. Number one, she's a widow. Number two, trying to gather sticks. Obviously, Elisha knew that it was a time of famine. Are we together now? It will look as though Elijah just came to help himself. But a woman is about to receive breakthrough. A woman is about to receive. Only God knows what happened. A widow meant that she lost her husband. And several other things would have left her life. And then, that I may drink. Verse 11. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Hear what the prophet says. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. Make that sacrifice. I know that it is not convenient for you, but I'm standing here representing God to step into your life and command restoration, breakthrough. But I'm demanding something from you. In this case, that which is valuable to you now. Make me kick first. Bring it unto me and afterwards you will make for you and your son. Listen. I wish, I wish that what I were saying would just happen without sacrifice. Restoration will cost you. You will have to provoke your faith. 
A seed is not just money. A seed is a sacrifice of something that costs. It's a proof that you love God. Whenever what you have is about to finish, there is a system to refill it again. In this case, he demanded sacrifice of her. Listen, a sacrifice in the realm of the spirit automatically brings whoever is doing it into a covenant with God. Psalm 50 verse 5, it says, Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. This is why many believers never experience restoration. Why will you as a man of God come and meet a woman? Please, brothers and sisters, I want you to reason this. You look at someone who is about to dry, nothing is happening in her life, and then you are asking her to sacrifice something. Jesus was having a crusade. He was the organizer and the conveyor of the crusade. And then he said, go and feed the people, and there was nothing. And then... Andrew found a young lad. You would call it bullying. Our generation knows how to abuse words. You would even call it an abuse. Collected the boy's loaf and bread. His lunchbox and took it to Jesus. And said, this is what we've been able to find. And Jesus said, fine. I thought Jesus had bad. So, such a harsh and wicked adult. You mean you bully this? Go and return it back. I am love. But Jesus said, that's it. Have you always wondered who had the remaining 12 baskets? The boy was willing to sacrifice a moment of satisfaction to create something. Many believers do not know how to sacrifice now to smile. This is a principle that does not just go to seeds alone. Sacrificing the convenience logs you today so that you can carry an anointing and a grace that will be able to speak to you. Sacrificing today to discipline yourself and learn the principles that will make you successful. You want to experience restoration and indeed it's a principle that applies to many mysteries in the spirit. Sacrifice. A few minutes ago you were shouting and now Koinonia is quiet. Why? Because it's a reflection of your unwillingness to part with things today and gain them tomorrow. If you want to be great, listen to me. If you want to define the limitation that comes with this system, get used to this language. Sacrifice. You will always give up something to go up. You won't hold what you have and still rise. The lighter you are, the higher you fly. Are we together? Sacrifice. Praise can be a sacrifice. Your seed can be a sacrifice. Your service in the house of God can be a sacrifice. Your honor to the vessels of God can be a sacrifice. You want to experience restoration. Listen, let me teach you something powerful about restoration. The blessing is not in what you have lost. The blessing is in what you have left. There's a very strange story in the Bible. I think it's in the book of Hosea or Amos. That a shepherd was trying to rescue a lamb that had been eaten by a lion the lion so ate the lamb that there was nothing left only one ear and two legs that was all that was left yet the shepherd still ran to still rescue the lamb what will you do with one ear and two legs eating the intestines eating all of this but in the realm of the spirit it is not what left you that is the issue it is what you have left what you have left is a sign that god is still interested in restoration that's why everything did not go are you hearing what i'm saying most times we forget what we have left and we keep regretting oh god this one left me a relationship left you but your health is still with you that health can be the seed that will bring back another relationship 
your job left you but your praise did not leave you that praise can be a sacrifice that will bring another job are you getting the, the way this thing works there is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost there is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. Listen, let me repeat myself. There is always something in your life that you have today that can bring back something you lost. Hallelujah. Yes. You had a miscarriage and you are crying and say, Lord, this is the fourth miscarriage. You lost the baby, sad, but by the grace of God, you are still alive and you can speak. Use your health as a seed to get another child. The health that you have dedicated to praising God as a seed of sacrifice. Apostle, but I lost my father, he's gone. I lost my mother, she's gone. I lost my brother, he's gone. I understand and I sympathize with you deeply from the depth of my heart. But you are the seed that is left. Use yourself and your life to gain back what your father would have been and what your mother would have been. Everything they would have been to you. Sowing that seed of sacrifice. Someone can appear in your life and say, I may not be your biological father, but I take responsibility for your life from today. No strings attached. There is such a possibility. Are we together? Yes. They killed several children. The nation of Israel was under threat. And a woman carried her son as a seed and put him in a river and just said, Lord, just protect this guy. And God said, that son that you gave as a seed, I will use him as the deliverer to preserve them. Whenever you are afraid of losing things, you open the door for losses. That which I have feared most has come upon me. There are many of us, you are so afraid of losing things that you, you fear success when it comes because you think it will not last. Anytime good things happen, you are careful. A brother comes to propose to you and you are saying, well, I said yes, but the truth is I've not said yes first. I've had 10 people break my heart. That's what happened to the woman who met Jesus. Six husbands, five men shattered her heart. The sixth one is not even her husband and Jesus came. So she was careful. And Jesus said, me, I'm not like the rest. Though. And gave her an encounter. She became an evangelist instantly. Went and gathered people and said, come. What of the madman at Gadara? Do you know there was a time that man had his sense back? There was a time he was born. There was a day they dedicated him. There was a day the madness started gradually until he got to that acute state where even chains could no longer hold him. He was in a cave all by himself. So when they crossed over to the other side, demons came through him, but Jesus had compassion. He was seeing a man who had potentials to be an evangelist, to win 10 cities, yet he was under that situation. And Jesus said, we can do something. Now, when you read your Bible, I don't want us to turn there, but even with those demons, the Bible says the man worshipped Jesus. The remaining 1% sense that I have, the demons are making me look like I don't recognize you, but that ounce of sanity, I sow it as a seed and I worship you. And Jesus said, all right. All of you people trying to mess up this guy's life, you can go places, but let this guy be restored. The Bible says they came and they found him in his perfect mind. He went to the Decapolis, 10 cities, gathered people and brought them to Jesus. The miracle is not in what you have left. I know that whilst you're sitting right now, there is a fibroid in your stomach, but can you use your mouth as the seed to take away that fibroid? Your stomach was affected, but you still have a voice. You can sing. You still have an ear. Your ear can be the seed, the sacrifice of attentiveness to listen to the word of the Lord can restore you. No man is ever helpless if you understand the mystery of seeds and sacrifices. Every time things leave you, forget about them. Focus on what you have left. Lord, I give you all your I lost my job. 
lost my wife, lost my children. I'm all alone. And God says, that's all you need. You are alone with me like Jacob. Use your aloneness as a seed. Sow it and receive an encounter. An encounter that will bring them again. Job understood this. He lost everything in his life. The only thing he had was his conviction. And the wife said, lose that one too. Ah, why are you talking like one of these foolish women? How else will he come back? Job said, though he slay me, I have lost my health, but I have not lost my voice. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Elihu and all and Co were talking all kinds of nonsense. Job came listening to them. And in chapter 42, Job said, well, I may not be able to give as I used to be, but I still have my mouth. I can be an intercessor. 42 verse 10, he started interceding for his friends. And God said, this is it. He took his life away. And God turned the captivity of Job, 42 verse 10, when he prayed for his friends. Listen, there is always something in your life that can bring back something that left you. If this is the only revelation you have tonight, you will rejoice. Go back home and stop tear all of those sheets of papers that are archives of regrets and start writing what you have left. I still have my convictions. I lost a job, but I still have my certificate. Are we together now? I lost my car, but my hands are still working well. I didn't die in the accident. And when you put all those things, you say, Lord, I laid this at the altar of sacrifice. I tell you to bring back everything and everything. Sacrifice. Number four, very quickly. The fourth key to restoration is engaging the prophetic. The fourth key to restoration, engaging the prophetic, specifically prophetic utterances. Let me show you three scriptures that will bless you tonight. Isaiah 42 verse 22. Please give it to us, media. Isaiah 42 verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. All of them are snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and non deliverance, for a spoil. And there is no advocate that prophesies to them, restore. For you to ever experience restoration, there must be the introduction of the prophetic into your life. The prophetic, the prophetic, either as an operation of the word of God or as a ministry of those anointed to walk in that respect. You have to understand what I'm teaching you. Without an encounter with a prophetic grace, a prophetic office, or a, a prophetic dimension of the word of God, there is no restoration. It's impossible. Second scripture, Psalm 119 verse 49. I found this scripture while I was studying and I felt it was very powerful and um, it would be great for us to see it. Psalm 119 verse 49. It says, Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Give us an amplified. I want to explain to you what this scripture said. Remember fervently the word and promise to your servant in which you caused me to hope. In other words, the man of God came and told you he has a covenant with God and said God made a promise to him that when he stands and does certain things, he will hear him. And you are now saying, Lord, remember when that man of God spoke to me that something about his altar and his covenant can bring me bring to I believed it. And he said, remember the word, the promise you gave your servant upon which I now hope that it will work for me. That's why sometimes you hear people say the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of Oyedipo. So there is it's not some religious, you know, whatever it is. It is a system of invoking the personal covenant. God, aside from the Old and the New Testament, God has personal covenants with men till today. God can enter a covenant with a man, a family, because of something that was done and say, look, whoever does certain things connected to this, I will bless you. 
God had a covenant with Abraham. Listen. And anybody and anything that came out of Abraham. A sad story later happened. And then Ishmael came out. When Ishmael came out, the Bible says Hagar, Hagar and Ishmael were in the wilderness. Two of them were crying. Only the voice of Ishmael was heard in heaven. Why? The Bible says God heard the voice of the young lad. A child is crying. The mother is crying. Only one voice is heard in heaven. Because God said, Abraham, you and anybody and anything that comes out of you. It's not God's concern whether it was a mystic or not. He is bound to it. It is still the reason why Ishmael today can still manifest certain dimensions of the blessing. Remember. The last scripture. 2 Kings. Let's look at chapter 7. Actually, the whole is, is Elisha's encounter in Samaria, chapter 6, 7. But we're looking at chapter 7, just two scriptures. 2 Kings, chapter 7, we'll read verse 1 and then we'll read verse 18. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. This is the prophetic now. Samaria as a nation was ravaged by so much famine that the Bible says women were eating their children. Mothers, please think for a minute. Think of roasting the leg of your child and watching it roast and yet not being afraid. I've heard of people drinking their urine because of test, but I've not heard of people eating their children. So Nigeria's recession is not as bad as it was here. The Bible says women, as compassionate as they were, were eating the same children. Eating your child is like eating yourself. The child came out of you. It's the same thing as cutting yourself and eating it. And this is what happened. And the prophet came and said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Listen. He said, Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Look at me. Let me teach you something profound. The miracle. This tomorrow was not something God revealed to the prophet and said, that's what I want to do. The, uh, the prophet chose the date when that land will be delivered. Listen, this is not revelation. It is a God revealed to me. In other words, I'm just giving you a superior information. There is a difference between revelation and creation. Revelation just gives you a prior knowledge of what is there anyway. Creation makes it appear and manifest. Like the testimony of our dear lady who goes to her room and sees piles of money, physical cash. Now that's creation. Revelation is I can stand here and say there is a brown envelope in your room. Go and check it. I didn't put it there. I only help to guide you so you go and find it. This prophet was not creating. This prophet, I mean, he was not revealing. He was creating. He says, look, I understand that part of the privileges of prophetic ministry is to appoint to people dates. The realm of the spirit has events without dates tied to them. It takes the prophetic to appoint dates. That's why through the prophetic ministry, you can go into five years ago, pick an event that would have been your testimony that was corrupted through witchcraft and fast forward it and appoint a date in your future to make it happen. You have to believe this. Otherwise, how does God restore years? Are we together now? Time is only subject to this realm. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of happenings that are manipulated by the will of God and the intelligence of citizens on the earth who know how to make it happen. So there are events that represent the will of God. There are certain dimensions of his will that are fixed according to his predeterminate counsel. But there are others that are flexible left to the intelligence of the saints. Such as your miracle today. It's not God that decided that today will be your miracle. You would have chosen to remain at home. 
Jesus was passing a city called Nain. Are we Bible students? It was never his plan to raise any dead body. He was minding his business. He was not on evangelism. And he saw people crying. And then he said, what's going on here? And they said, there is a woman ravaged by witchcraft. Her husband that dead. Her only son dead. And Jesus said, wait a minute. Bring down that coffee. There and then, he decided the destiny of that woman. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This issue of one day, one day is faithlessness. You can insist. The Bible said today, if you hear his voice, you can choose and say, Lord, today, today, I'm tired of this hangover of nonsense around my life. Today is the day your faith can turn it around and bring you a miracle. You believe that? Say amen. Listen. You are the only one who continues to progress in time. The realm of the spirit does not progress in time. The time is bare. Are we together now? So in the realm of the spirit, you don't, there's no such thing as past and present with God. So when you say God, remember five years ago, you said you would do something and you did not do it. God said it doesn't make any difference. It can still happen. And you say, Lord, but I'm older now. God says, and so I can readjust it to still fit the older you. Lord, you gave me a word that I will marry at 21. I'm 35. And God says, no problem, I can't do it. Lord, I plan to have six children. God says, it doesn't make any difference. Six years, two, two years with twins. My word has come to pass. Lord, you said you would prosper me, but this has not happened. I would have gotten a job. How much was the salary that time? 20,000. How much would you have had now? 1.2. God says, I give you an idea that brings you 2.4 in one month. Listen, please, you have to believe what I'm telling you. Otherwise, we're wasting our time here. The prophetic is powerful. It can appoint dates for spiritual events and cause them to be made manifest. You've seen this happen in Koinonia. Somebody will write jam, for instance, and have 160 something. And all of a sudden, a word will come and you go and check it again and see 260 something. How do you explain that? Someone writes an exam and just remembers writing his name alone on question one. And then comes and the word comes and the result comes out and he's in 4.8. Oh, please, brothers and sisters, we are intelligent people, but we are also spiritual. Never allow your intelligence take away the place of the realm of the spirit in your life. The same way you are seated here and say, Apostle, can God do it? Brothers and sisters, he can. Look at my life. Look at this ministry. The word of God. Can God cure that sickness? Yes, he can. I repeat, yes, he can. Can God turn around my captivity? Some of you are not sick. But what is wrong with you is better sickness than that problem. God can still turn it around. God can turn it around. In the name of Jesus, God can turn it around. The Lord declared and said, I shall announce to us that this miracle service is dedicated towards restoration. I truly believe every word of God. And I believe that one of the things God is going to be doing tonight is to call back things. Compress time for people. Call back things. Please believe it. Believe it. Believe it. I am a testimony. I've seen God bless people overnight. Overnight. Ha, he said rejoice not over me, my enemies. Sometimes life can whip you to a point where you look up and say, God, I have served you. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't rob anybody. Why is my life like this? Then God tells you, locate the power of prophecy. Locate the power of prophecy. Some of you didn't want to come tonight. You can come and still look and say, wow, what an interesting service. Or you can come and pray. say, Lord, it is within your power to change this situation. Why should we pro prolong it? It's within your power. It's within your power. You've seen the testimonies. We never announce anything here that is not verified. You've seen all the great testimonies. No matter what is wrong with your life, 
your ministry has crashed down. You were once on fire and once anointed, and something happened. You can't tell what it is, but that grace and that unction doesn't look like it's there again. You are preaching, and even you, you know you are not blessing anybody. Again, like the hair of Samson, it can come back again. My help. My help. My mother has died. I'm an orphan. There's no one to take care of me. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There are many fathers and mothers. Prophecy just needs to bring two of you together. Tonight, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you will be amazed to see the way the Lord will turn your life. Now I'm seated here and my baby cannot even move, he's there. Just give me a few minutes and watch a miracle that will bring tears from your eyes. I believe God. I am one man of God that believes God can turn around any situation. He will always be alive. The Lord will perfect that concerning. Some of you travel so far. There are some of you standing in the in the rain, standing outside. God is too faithful to come and waste your time. In the next few minutes, I want you to believe this. Please listen, listen. Don't be part of those. Now is not the time to pinch around and hope. Will God do it? Apostle, I lost money. Apostle, I lost joy. Apostle, I lost a job. They blackmailed me. The God of heaven is able to restore. And let me tell you something. God can restore fast. He can restore fast. 430 years in captivity. One night God said that's all. When God arises, El Gibor, the mighty man, when he shakes himself and stands up and says, I want to leave David down, let me tell you, I don't care what which way. I have seen God lift people who were not even prepared. I ju he just chose that I want to make a specimen with this person. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. We're about to pray. I came here with all my heart, believing that God will restore somebody. If you belong to any of these categories, except you've not lost anything, you can sit down. But if you know there is something in your life that you know must come back, I'm not saying may come back, it's not a discussion. lost my joy, can't come back. I've lost my peace, can't come back. I lost my husband. God can fetch me wherever he is and return him. Hallelujah. Listen, we are going to pray for a few minutes. It will be very fast. I don't plan to waste our time here. We are going to be very fast. The message is already communicated. It's not when I start ministry. As soon as we start praying, I like you. Please, if you have never believed a man of God in your life, why don't you do this? Just, just be childlike for once and say, Lord, I believe the word of your servant. I open up my heart. I want you to open your mouth and call things back into your life. Call opportunities. 
this atmosphere is anointed. Come.
Christmas I'm seeing shoes in the realm of the spirit and the Lord is telling me people will wear them now this is a sign of restoration too Lord where are they let it happen now there is a grace for performance grace for performance please bring them out quickly please ushers you should know this we are saving time please quickly he says grace for performance right now in the name of Jesus
look at me. The past has a way of wanting to relieve itself in your present. You think about your failure of primary school. Now you are a graduate, but it has still sponsored your lack of confidence. In the name that is above all things, one more time I pray. Anyone here still connected to his past, I come in the name of Jesus, the one whom I serve. I provoke an anointing from heaven. Some of you represent your families. Right now, in the name of 
Jesus. May that fire come upon you now and bring you breakthrough. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Nothing is working. I cause it. I cause the spirit. I cause the power. I cause the influence. category I'm talking about. Nothing is working. Huh? Even finances is the grace of God. Where are you coming from? Um, hold on. Please help that, the ushers to help them. Are you Yoruba? You are Yoruba? Yes, sir. From Akure State? Yes. Where are you from? Ondo, Ondo State. Ondo is what? This what I'm saying. Akure or Ondo. That's what. You are coming from Akure. Yes. And because I'm seeing a car and that's where you are coming from. Yes. Where are you coming from now? Akure. That's what I'm saying. Yes. The Lord is going to change your life totally. Right now. Who is Lekon? Listen, just one touch from the Lord will change your story, lift your hands. Lay come, overflow, he's in the overflow, where are you? Please stand up, my brothers, stand up. What's your name? Lay come, sir. From where? Ekiti State, sir. Stand here, your life is about to change. Look at him, sir. The Lord will do you a miracle. Lady wearing this, this lime thing, God is not done with you. I've seen an angel pouring oil on her. This one's hand. Huh? Help her. God is not done. I'll come to you shortly. We're going to do this very fast. Hopefully, before by the grace of God, between now and the end of the day, we'll convert one of the miracle service to a vigil. It's not just prayer. By God's grace, I will trust God for grace to prophesy upon our lives. I will go section by section, inside and outside. Prophecy is powerful when it's done with understanding. It can wipe your tears in one minute. Lift your hands. You are naked. Is it Augustus? Yes, Augustus or Augustus. Something that has been Augustus. Augustus or something. Augustus. I'm hearing like Augustus. Please, we have to finish fast because we have to pray for the city. Augustus. Change the story. Jesus. Something just left you. You are sick. That sickness has gone now. In the name of Jesus. My brother, you don't make it in life by hustling. You make it in life by divine direction. This is what God is saying. What's your name? Just bring them, but the name I hear 
Yes, but Augustus, but I will pray for you. Something Augustus. My brother, hold my hands. This is not about hustling. Huh? It's not moving around. It's walking circumspectly by the Spirit and in grant you grace. Hold my hands. The Lord will wipe your tears in the name of Jesus. I bring this oppression to an end. That man holding pictures, run, come. Your breakthrough has come. Run, run, come. Stand here, where are you coming from? I'm looking at you. You are not in Zaria. From Kano State. You are from Kano State. Who is this? No, no, I'm not. I'm looking at your picture. My mom. What's wrong with her? Nothing is wrong with her. She gave me something for you. Your mom is sick. You don't know something is wrong with her. Hold on, please. If they are manifesting, just leave them there. Please, let's be fast. I want to pray for you. Hold on. Who is this one? She's my sister too. This is your sister. Yes. If I don't pray, I'm seeing this girl inside the coffin. Where is she? She's in Canada. Is she well? Yes. She's well. Yes. We have to pray for her. One of your sisters is sick. Yes. Sir. Is that true? Yes, Where sir. is she? She's in Canada. She's in Canada. The same thing happening to that one is about to happen to this one. Do I know you? That's what I'm telling you. God wants to change this thing now. You are a sincere person. Now what do you do? I'm a banker. Sir. You are a banker. I will pray for you so that they will not cause trouble and steal money and you in your group. There's already trouble. Yes. Is yes, that sir. true? Yes, sir. In your office. Yes, sir. And if I don't pray for you, they are going to sack you by August. I want to pray for you. Correct, sir. August. August. That's what stand up. That's what they told you. Hold it. If I don't pray for you by August, you are leaving at once. But there is a God. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. Come, sir. I don't know you. And I don't know how your mother got to know me. But your mother loves me with all her heart. Is that true? Yes, sir. I want you to tell your mother that her son is blessing her from his heart. You hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. I'll pray for you, sir. Huh? Because you people have to be careful. There is a group, this bank group. All of you have problems. They are going to make you to pay some amount of money that is missing. And they are going to drive all of you. You need the mercy of God. Huh? Yes, and for your sister, this is witchcraft. God is coming in to step in. You're a very nice person to come in. In the name of Jesus. The same thing God is delivering you from is what is delivering the person shouting here. Let it turn now. I lay my hands upon the Ukechuku. Is it Ukechuku or Ukechuku or something? In the name of Jesus, I speak favor. Sir, look at me. As I laid my hands on you, I saw you climbing a ladder. Watch this. This is how you will stand here in Koinonia to testify. Listen. I want everybody to look at this brother very well, know his face, because he's going to come and stand here and testify of a dramatic breakthrough that God is bringing to his life. Is it Obochuku or Obochuku? Which of you came from Southern Canada? You come and stand, your miracle has come. Jesus. Stand up, sir. What do you do? Watch with the Pepsi, Kathy. Federal Medical Center. Yes, careful. I want to pray for you. If God were to do one thing for you, what will it be? You're a wise man. I want to pray for you. God is going to lift you. Do you know that the hand of God is upon your life? Not just for like hand of God, even to tell people about Jesus Christ. There is an evangelistic grace on yes. your life. God has revealed it to you. Yes. You know it. I've been there. I was together in your program in soup. Two days program you came at Kev. Oh, you were there at the, at yes. the meeting. You were part of the committee people yeah. there. Yeah. Because I see a man that God will use greatly in outreaches. I'm seeing signs and wonders. God will use you greatly. So I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let an anointing, something will come upon you now. I tell you, you rise up from this night and begin to walk miracles.
looks like a healthy child. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus, the same thing is happening to that person. I release that grace. I activate your spirit, man, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. There is a spirit troubling this brother. Stand up. Come. Lift your hands. Let him go now. Out. In the name of Jesus Christ. He came to receive impartation. What you need is deliverance first. There is a, a spirit that is oppressing you. Mama, can I talk to you, ma? Please. Where are you coming from, madam? Abuja. You believe that God is going to change your story. In the name of Jesus, you will. I want to pray for you. Please hold my hand because the Lord said I should bless you. The Lord said I should bless you. There is, I'm seeing, I'm seeing one. Kai. The Lord is showing me the vision of a lady. I'm looking at this table and I'm seeing, I'm not seeing a table. I'm seeing a lady. You are wearing like blue, a blue cloth with her tie. You are crying now, cleaning your tears. And you are asking the Lord that I will locate you. You are inside here. No, you are wearing blue. No. No. I will pray for you. The blessing is coming. You want something. Who is that? You tied your head with. Madam, run and come. You are the one I'm talking about. I will pray for you. Look at me. Where were you sitting? Where, was she inside here? Yes, sir. Where, is, where are you coming from? I'm coming from State. State. I'm going to pray for you. God said, I should tell you that he's bringing captivity to an end in your life this night. Captivity to an end. You believe it? Let it be yours now. The power of the Holy Spirit. My sister, look at me. Shame and reproach. I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Hold my hands. Let shame and reproach leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me just talk to you one minute. 
children look small here, but I'm seeing. Hold on, hold on. They are here. One is who is this one? These ones are your children. I'm looking at this one. Is she married? She is married. Because I'm seeing a ring. And I'm seeing a ring, but I'm not hearing the sound of a child. And the Lord is saying a child should come now. Two years. Two years. Two years. Where is the person? Come. No woman. There's no woman. Call the person's name now. Huh? No children. Two years. No children. We are going to pray. She's not here. This is your son. This the one here in the Okay, you're standing for them. Mama, why should you give birth to children and not see your grandchildren? Somebody shout, no way. Shout it again, no way. The Bible says you will see your children's children. That's scriptures. It didn't say you will see them on your deathbed. You will see them and dance and rejoice with them. Mama, do you believe if I pray for this lady now? She will come back and testify here with the child. I believe in Jesus' name. It will happen. You Jesus. believe. What's her name? Her name is Adama Isa. Adama. Adama. Yes, the name of Jesus become pregnant. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This one. Yeah, immediate. This is the one. No, no, I'll pray for him. This one is again. Peter. Peter. Sometimes diabetes. Hold on. I will pray for you. you have fibroid, yes. You have diabetes, yes. you have ulcer. Yes, sir. What does this look like? You see how the devil is fibroid, diabetes, ulcer. A woman like this, then her own children, barrenness. Then this one, there's no speed in your life. Come and stand here. You are you that you are the gentleman. There's serious retrogression. I have to pray for you. Huh? You love God, but you are not moving forward at all. I have to pray for you. Is that true, Mama? Repeating, repeating. That's what I'm saying. It's not moving forward. Yes, sir. You believe in the message I just preached that God is a restorer. I believe. My Jesus. Mother, it's not that you are lazy. There is a spirit that manipulates your results. You are being repeating forever. I have to pray for you. Lift your hands. You are the one I will start with first. Father, let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on your mind and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit to have the mind of Christ. Right now, over. Mama, that's it. It's over in the name of Jesus. I pray for this, your children. Pray for this. Where is he? Husband, yes. we were from Plato State. We live in Kano. Mumta and Bokos. Okay. We have to pray for him because I'm seeing a serious spirit of delay in his life. We have to pray for him. And I'm seeing he's having problem already with his wife. This is something we need to pray for. Uh, I hope you are not embarrassed. No, no, sir. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you. Mama, let me pray for you. All sad diabetes, fibroid, and um, and and all sad. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every single one of them, help her, let it go now. The same way it came, let it go. Every house has an entry and exit. Let this be the exit of this now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady is going to shout now under the anointing. God is removing fiber from someone's stomach. Now, this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone, I'm seeing this. I command it now. I command it now to happen. Those malignant groups, I command it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the power. Spirit, a loud shout is going to be someone with that loud shout. That's the end of it. It goes now, never to be told. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands before we pray for the sick. I want to challenge every strange spirit that is responsible for sabotaging the purposes of God in your life. Lift your hands. As I minister deliverance to you, it doesn't mean you are possessed. No, no. The operations of demons is such that they can take advantage of mechanisms, provisions in the realm of the spirit to manipulate people. I want to pray for you. I have to do this before we start praying for the sick. Inside, outside, I want you to be ready. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, Anyone 
anyone under the influence of any spirit, please get ready and pray. I see mighty deliverances happening. Any strange spirit in this place that is tying down the destiny of anyone, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. One, two, three. maybe 1 to 11 now as I'm praying the power of God is going to come upon that child and the child will start manifesting I'm seeing this is this is some demonic diabolic thing I'm not saying the child is bad I'm just showing you what the Lord is showing me father wherever this child is I pray for our children now whether it is an initiation whether it is anything occultic and I decree and declare right now by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ wherever that little child is I command those devils to live now I command those devils to live now in the name of Jesus Christ I command those devils to live now very quickly we are going to pray for the sick there are so many things God is doing in the realm of the spirit there are so many things God is doing there is a brother the power of God is going to come on him now overflow to the one at the road please I want you to bring him now I want to talk to him overflow two I see an angel of the Lord moving across overflow two and the fire of God is falling on a brother please I want that brother to come 
the fire of God will suddenly fall upon that person. Please let him come. Carry him and, and bring him. I want to prophesy to him. I'm going to give us a prayer point now while we are praying. We are going to ask people to come so that we'll pray for the sick very, very quickly. Because I want to be able to have time to prophesy. Remember I spoke about restoration. I want to use time to prophesy. Now watch this please. Overflow one, all the overflows. Those who are sick in body. I want you to, when, when we finish praying, make your way to your various overflows and wait there. There will be people who will come to minister healing to you. We believe in the ministry of miracles. God has anointed us for this purpose. And by God's grace, we are not too many that we cannot lay hands on people one by one. And that's why we do that. So that everybody will have that sense of, I may not be able to lay hands on people outside, but there are men and, and women of God anointed and they will be able to also minister to you. Praise the Lord. Please make sure you are sensitive outside. I want to pray for that gentleman. That's him. Ah. Let it end now. I stretch my hands towards you. I bring it to an end. There is sorrow upon sorrow on this gentleman's life. The Lord is asking me to wave my hands. It comes to an end now. This guy is not the person. No. Just, just leave him there. At least he has received his own. Who is this one? From outside, overflow two. The person is supposed to be shouting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this end. I'm stretching my hands. In the name of Jesus, I command the power of darkness over your life and over your family to be broken right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I breathe the life of God into you and I decree and declare that it comes to an end now. I know there are many people here. There is a gentleman. Please. I don't do these things to disgrace people. But there is a gentleman here. Um, you are thoroughly addicted to taking. You know you always hear me say that thing. What's the name of that thing? That codeine. But your own is not just codeine alone. It's plus. Whether smoke. Um, some of these funny things. You are here and. You are tired of it, but you cannot stop. Please, where are you? Please don't waste our time. There's a gentleman that I need to pray for. Seems to me like that person is outside or inside. Please, if you are here, don't be embarrassed. I want to help you end this. I know there are many people, but there is a specific person God is talking to me about. Let's just flow as a Holy Spirit to stop him, please. That gentleman, I want you to come out here and I want to lay my hands and end it. You are tired of it, but you can't stop no matter what you do. That's what you spend your little money on. And this thing is crashing your life and destroying your destiny. Where are you? Let's appreciate him. Hallelujah. Listen, look at me. Jesus said, he who does not have sin should cast the first stone. When we call people like this, we don't condemn people. I love you with all my heart. The meaning of my name is the way to love. I love people. You look at these gentlemen, you can see the way their lives are. You see how disorganized they are. This is the devil. If we don't pray for these people, this gentleman one day will become a father. It doesn't matter. I prophesy for one is for all. Come and join them. I want to pray for you now. Please, one minute. If you, are, if you are still thinking about it, just remain there. But you are saying, man of God, I'm tired of this thing. You have to help me. Quickly join them. God gave a word for one, but I'm praying because we have to pray for the sick quickly. Some of you, nobody led you into it. It's a spirit that just pushed you into this thing. You love God, but this thing is killing you. I salute your courage. I don't know if I would have had the courage to come out. I salute your courage. Come. I think we should honor them. Come on, Koinonia.
because it does it matter of course it does of course it does of course it does when I start praying please don't come out again if you are still coming I want you to rush and come male or female I don't care whether you are a male or female it doesn't matter I, I, I perceive that there are even ladies male or female Jesus is setting us free so there's nothing to be embarrassed about it please come and stand quickly celebrate them. They are still coming. Let's give them one more minute. Since God is already talking to them now, let's just take advantage of the anointing here. Apostle, I don't take it all the time. Still join them. You take it. The most important thing is that you take it. Even if it's not all the time, you take it. Join them and let God help you. Look at me, brothers and sisters. I am your friend. I love you with all my heart. Like I said, you may look at this boys. Please, let me give a disclaimer. Hold on, Mike. Be careful when you look at people's children and just point and think they are bad. These people need help. I interact with these people all the time and they will tell you they don't like it. It's a spirit. Some of them, nobody to got them into all of these things just by themselves. Some of them had dreams. Some of them had strange encounters. But my Bible says, God bless you. Don't be ashamed. Come and join. Please give them room. Honestly, let's, let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. If you are joining, come. The Bible says, for this purpose, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy. That this, this, you see, this smoking and drinking thing is a terrible thing. You carry cough syrup, snuff it till you are almost dying, pass out and come back again and still do it. And then others sell that, that leaf that they tie. You collect it, smoke it and all of that. Look at me. I want to pray for you. And I want to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your coming out here does not make me better than you in any way. Are we together now? We are only, we are only benefactors of the grace and the mercy of God. I'm agreeing with you. Most people complain. Most people gossip about you. I'm not gossiping about you. I want to help you. Koinonia as a family loves you. Now listen, let me challenge all of you, please. After this prayer, huh, all of you are automatically members of prayer department for the next one month. You are welcome to prayer department for the next one month. Praise God. So, this is how we do it here. I won't deceive you that once I just pray for you, you go back and meet those friends. They will laugh at you and laugh at me and say forget about them. And then before you know it, you will go back into those things. One of the laws of, of influence is atmosphere. You open yourself to an atmosphere and destroy you. So after I pray for you, um, ushers, what will happen is you can get their names and their details. We'll forward it to the, um, the prayer department and then we'll keep following up with you from there. You need to keep praying. You need to keep building your spirit. You need to be taught the word of God. And by God's grace, we're helping you. Some of you here will be doing what I'm doing some years to come. You will hold this mic in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you here, the ladies, you may be the wives of great men of God, evangelists and apostles. There is nobody, there's no such thing as hopelessness. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Stretch your hands, saints of God. If you are a mother here, stretch both of your hands. If you are a father here, stretch both of your hands. And say, use them as a point of contact. Whether your children are small or, or not, use them as a point of contact. We pray for you. We are praying for you now. That the power that is responsible for this living will end. I make contact with you. Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me somebody outside. 
I may not ask you to come. You stole a phone on Thursday, still with you. Go and return it after this service. Go and return that phone. You love God, but stealing a phone to sell it and causing trouble for somebody is not the way it happens. God can help you and God can bless you. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. If I have not touched you, just let me know and I will lay my hands on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands upon you. I command that spirit to leave you. I command that devil to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that devil to leave you. I curse. Oh, you are standing here for your brother. Where is he? What a wonderful lady. In the name of Jesus, I use you as a point of contact. As it's happening to you, let it happen to you. In, hold on, don't go. Uh, okay, you are directing them. Okay. We decree and declare. Have I prayed for you, gentlemen? In the name of Jesus, all of you are my friends. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we break this addiction from your lives. Join me and say amen. I pray for any association that will not let you serve God. I command those associations from today. Let them be a dissociation between you and them. Jesus. God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly. Now, we are going to begin to pray. Have I prayed for them? Have I prayed for you? This guy, you are going to be a man of God. This brother, this gentleman. Bring him. This young man is going to be a man of God. Hold my hands. You need guidance and mentorship. There is a call of God upon your life. Huh? That we we and whatever it is that is still in the call, we cause it now. Name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Self time in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every challenge in my life must come under the authority of Jesus tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Those who are seeking body, I want you to come. Those who are seeking body, overflow one, two, three inside. to bring the healing power of God to people and we are very happy we will continue to do it some of you are standing for your loved ones God has made this place a, a solution center and we honor him for it now please look up we are going to do two things very quickly um, overflow one you can go to your projector stand overflow two your projector stand overflow three and every other one four just join them somewhere there. Someone will come to pray for you now. Praise the Lord. While they are doing this, how many of us came with our prayer request? Hallelujah. Now, what I want you to do very quickly, those online, you can post it online and uh, we are going to connect with it by faith. If you have not written your prayer request or you've not written for your loved ones, do it quickly. The ushers are going to be waving the, a basket. Please, let's do it orderly. Just wave your prayer request and they'll locate you. You'll drop it there and we'll bring it to the altar while we pray. Very quickly. Praise the Lord. Pastor Jimmy will be outside overflow one. Pastor Jimmy and Pastor Femi overflow one. He's going to be praying. Pastor Alpha, you go to overflow two. Um, together with Mike. Mike, you follow him overflow two. Overflow three, Benga and Promise. Two of you will be at overflow two and uh, overflow three and any other overflow there. Praise the Lord. We'll do it that way. Father, together we release a corporate anointing for miracles, signs, and wonders. We decree and declare right now that as we begin to minister to God's people, do a quick walk. Let incurable situations go. Let cancers go. Let HIV go. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Anoint everyone, oh God, that you are going to be using to lay hands on these people and let there be dramatic testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, God bless you. Please, let's go very quickly. We have, let's try to see how we can cover this in 15, 20 minutes. Are we together now? God bless you. Lord, thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Worship team, you help us. Bless us in Jesus' name. Please accept, listen, please accept the people laying hands on you, ask you. You don't need to tell them what is wrong with you. Just stand by faith. Praise God. The prophetic is at work. If there is need to prophesy or talk to you, just receive by faith. It doesn't mean we have to touch the area. Just believe by faith. You go and check yourself or call your loved ones. Outside, I know they're still praying for you. Just connect by faith. Hallelujah. This is not a ritual that we do. This is a revelation that God gave and an instruction that every miracle service we receive the requests of God's people. No matter how we try to reach everyone, we are constrained by time. And um, so we are presenting it to the Lord. These are the things that attempt to say Jesus did not die. These are the things that attempt to say the work of the cross was and is a lie. So we bring them before him and we say, Lord, these are the obstacles that stop the revelation of your victory from being established in our lives. And we trust this fire to descend upon them. Stretch your hands by faith. Stretch your hands by faith. Believe it. Believe it. I want you to pray and say the request I'm dropping here is the last one. The last time I will be dropping this request. Please pray. They will still have more, please. Those online, this is the time you connect with us. Those outside, you can stretch your hand to your, your projectors. God is doing miracles now. God of one. Jabala. Now our eyes open. Will you come to your rest? Let the eyes of your mind, and then we will rejoice as we close. Father, I declare in the name of Jesus that every request that is upon this altar tonight in the presence of your people, let it be turned into speedy testimonies. Christ, I ask you to arise in your might, visit impossible cases, beginning from right now, impossible cases, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and I ask that in the name of Jesus Christ, let the fire from heaven turn this request, some of them humanly impossible requests into testimonies. I stand upon this request and as I match them in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that they remain under your feet forever. I decree and declare that they remain under your feet forever. I decree and declare that they remain under your feet forever. I decree and declare that they remain under your feet forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I pray. 
those online their requests we connect by faith and i prophesy that the same fire in this place will visit your requests in the name of jesus those who have been assigned unto death by reason of this prayer they are delivered from death those who have been assigned unto failure by reason of this prayer they are declared a success around age long captivities you declared unto us in this miracle service that you are bringing restoration I prophesy that anointing upon this request restore oh God restore oh God restore oh God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ let there be strange restorations right now in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen I want to pray for you this is the last segment I want us to connect our time is gone we'll do this very quickly please lift your hands as I pray for you Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, I decree and declare right now every dry bone, every dry situation, every hopeless situation in your life, receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Everything called dead in your life, dead finances dead relationships dead career lives in the name of jesus hear the word of restoration i prophesy let it come back to life now i prophesy come back to life now come back to life now come back to life now Every issue that has been a lingering issue for a long time and has refused to leave your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus, let tonight be the last night you will see it. Let tonight be the last night you will see it. He said, these Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever. I command that you see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ that is supposed to have opened up to you and we don't know why it has refused to open till now in the name of Jesus at this June miracle service I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you for those who are asking God for direction for the next level beginning from tonight receive encounters that give you direction outside make sure you are connecting receive encounters that give you direction in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life every gift that is not yet speaking every grace that is you is still dormant within you whether spiritual gifts or physical gifts, I decree and declare right now. Shabras kata pakata kata kata, shegete kete kete, ma prato so do 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 pa shegete ne. I command an awakening right now. I command a resurrection right now. I command an awakening right now. I command an awakening right now. Hear me. Every creative ability locked up on anyone here that has not found expression, I declare and declare life to your gift, life to your ability in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. There are many people here you are not walking in spiritual gifts. Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. I stretch my hands to you. Out of the abundance of help I have got 
grace and mercy something is coming upon you now i decree and declare all nine gifts of the spirit revealed in scripture alongside others that have not been recorded at the count of three oh god according to the faith of your people let there be a distribution right now one two three take it right now 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 step into those gifts i release it upon you i open up your spirit i open up your understanding to be fruitful towards this gift in the name of jesus i declare upon you the mantle of favor that has made the difference in the life of ordinary people granting them access to platforms access to people access to resources right now in the name of jesus receive that mantle right now take that anointing of supernatural favor i impart it upon your life i impart it upon your life hallelujah I pray for you right now. Everything that represents dishonor in your life. The Bible says where thou hast been deserted so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I speak over your life. The kind of honor that lifts you and distinguishes you above your contemporaries. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Every dying ministry here, come back to life now. Every dying business, help them, help them please. Every dying business here, come back to life now. In the name of Jesus, every dying destiny here, I command you, come back to life in the name of Jesus. Every dying career, destroy your prayer life so that your the fervency of your prayer life has gone down in the name of Jesus I found those calls to come back alive I found those calls of your prayer life to come back alive in the name of Jesus I pray for the spirit of revelation like never before access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the operation of the world receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now i impart upon you the gift of faith let it be yours now in the name of jesus i impart upon you the gift of faith capacity to do impossible things receive that grace in the name of jesus I decree and declare one by one beginning from tonight the same way Noah opened the door of the ark and the animals started coming by themselves I command everything that should be in your life and has left you the same anointing that drew the animals one by one to the ark I command you to draw your blessings to your life now Blessings to your life now. Listen, Noah did not go to look for the animals, he just opened the door. The same way you have opened the door of your destiny, I command. I'm saying it again. I want you to believe me. It doesn't take time, it only takes the right word into your life. I decree and declare again between now and the next month's miracle service let there be strange testimonies of restoration strange testimonies of restoration whatever has not been working in your life right now whether it's your academics your marriage whatever it is i force it to work now Anything called barrenness in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Whether they are here or connected by faith, I command anyone called barren become a joyful mother of children. Become a joyful mother.
students whether on campus the university or any other campus I declare most of you are on break now you are about to resume as you resume in the name of Jesus I put life to your academics I command missing scripts to be found I command wrongly calculated results to be corrected in the name of Jesus as you prepare to write your exams, I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. I prophesy like rain. Hear what I'm saying. I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here trusting God for a job? In the name of Jesus. Between now and the next 30 days, may the God of heaven arise and give you a job that will bring tears to your eyes. Finally, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that if you have never stood here to testify, listen to what I'm saying. If you have never stood here to testify in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with Jesus, the firstborn of the begotten, and I command that God will give you a testimony that will be too big for you to remain on your seat. A testimony that will be too great for you to remain on your seat. Zepotokosopatarataka. A testimony too big to remain on your seat. I decree and declare the spirit of death. There is a strange manifestation of the spirit of death. It always comes like a circle, looms over territory and takes the life of people. I declare, let the seal of the blood, the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family. In the name of Jesus, let the seal of the blood, the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family. I cause accidents. I cause any kind of tragedy from coming to any family in the name of Jesus Christ finally I pray for you I command in a way like never before the helpers of your destiny I speak over your life the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers even if they came before I call them again for lifting standing and saying man of God I want to make it right with Jesus some of you gave your hearts to him but for some reason things began to go haywire and you're saying man of God I want to return back some of you are yet to make this decision please listen to me inside and outside wherever you are you are saying man of God if you will pray for me I'm ready to surrender my heart to Jesus I'm ready to start afresh or start anew wherever you are I want to count five please if you are coming I want you to run clear the way for them our time is up and we have to be very very fast there are so many other things to do wherever you are as we begin to clap for you I count five you should be here please run like there's fire on the mountain one those coming from outside please protocol help them clear the way for them so that they come quickly quickly two koinonia appreciate them as they come run to Jesus Christ overflow one two three four everywhere please quickly three three are you coming please double up double 
double up, rush, rush, run and come. We're out of time, but this is a decision that is eternal. Come and encounter Jesus. God bless you. Come and encounter the power of God. Come and have a fresh start with him. He that did not withhold his only son, but offered him freely, how much more with him shall he give us all things? Keep coming. Three. Four. Five. Praise God. If you're coming, join them quickly. Those of you here in the front, I salute you. I congratulate you. While the rest are making their way coming, please, wherever you are, run, come. Catch up quickly, quickly. Are you rushing, please? Help us so that we can be very fast. We need to attend to people after service. I'd like you to lift your right hand and say this convincingly. Say this passionately. Say this sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you died for me you gave your life for me it's a powerful prayer you are praying tonight I've heard your word and I believe in you I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that Jesus is Lord over my life I believe that God raised him from the dead and I declare that eternal life is mine today right now I am a child of God my sins are forgiven I have the life of Christ in me in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus I declare your sins forgiven I set you free now by the power of the Holy Spirit and I decree and declare that you begin to enjoy the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life I pray for you that you will know the Lord like never before I declare that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of Satan is destroyed completely from your life in the name of Jesus. I declare that you have a new start from tonight and the Lord himself will continually be glorified in your life. You go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name. Amen and amen. God bless you and thank you. A gentleman is waving his hands. I want all of you to just follow them. They'll have your details. Appreciate you on our behalf. God bless you. Appreciate them quickly. Hallelujah. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.